Hello, welcome back. I'm Robbie. This is Naz Compares, and welcome back to Data News of the Week, the video where we grab the little bits of news that involve data that we can squeeze into any other video and bung it into one big one. And today, of course, we're going to kick things off talking about Computex. You can see it there just above me. I've got to say, Computex is an event I've followed for several years, but much like CBIT, the one that was in Germany for a few years, I think we're starting to see things go a little bit more digital more and more not just because of the pandemic but just a lot of brands have realized that they don't need to go to some big event on you know another whole part of the world and try to get the world's media to go to them when they can put themselves in the digital platform and unfortunately as much as i love computex and i'm really really glad i got to go a few years ago i think it would be remiss not to highlight that this event which once spanned multiple buildings is was now very much a shell of its former self now hopefully this is something that will change but it does seem remarkably apparent here that many, many brands are just seeing the virtues and the savings that can be made in digital presentations, and even then just pouring the budget straight into it. But nonetheless, there was a few things that came out of Cobitex this year that are worth talking about, two of them specifically. Um, if we go through it, again, they've done the whole event, and it hasn't quite wrapped up yet. There's still other bits and bobs, and we're digging through it, me and Eddie. But the things that stood out the most, of course is that Fizon controller. We've talked about it before, the E26. It's Fizon's uh, PCIe Gen 5 controller, a Gen uh, 5x4 uh, SSD controller there, allowing speeds of between tw um, 12 and 13 uh, gigabytes there, which is going to be really good news. You know, 12,000 to 13,000 uh, megabytes per second there, potential as PCIe 5 motherboards are starting to appear on the scene. We saw several being unveiled at Computex and indeed other events like CES earlier in the year. But not just uh, Fizon kind of really pushing the boundaries, trying to get an early stake in the PCIe Gen 5 generation there. We started to see not just more PCIe Gen 5 SSDs is something we've discussed before start to arrive, but a few more kind of leanings towards the commercial sector. A Pacer kind of showing off their SSD, you'll know they didn't flat out say uh, in many places that they're using the E26 controller. They pretty much almost certainly are. There's only a couple of um, Gen 5 kind of com big known controllers floating around at the moment. And the one they're going for here, they've got the reported 12 and 13 there. And again, they're talking about that maximum performance there, which I think is 15.7, but everyone's labeling it as 16 gigabits per second. Um, and as we reach into the summer and autumn of 2022, we're going to start to see a lot more of these motherboards start to pop up with that Gen 5 slot. I should know, I'm probably going to buy one for testing for this channel. Um, but again, do check out a few of these commercial grade SSDs that are getting shown off. The Zadak was the one that kind of took center stage, uh, uh, you know, the Apesa and utilizing that same um, heat sink there. It's the same SSD, don't worry. Um, but again, we've talked about uh, PCI Gen 5 SSDs here on the news video. Uh, for quite a few weeks and i would say for the majority of uh, spring of 2022 and i think this is something that's going to revolve very quickly and what a number of us are just wondering which one of the big brands is going to come out of the gate first because the pci gen 4 generation you know when it came to the bigger performing drives wd and samsung were pretty much the first to bat there with the uh the samsung pro and of course the wd black then again this is going to be a question of which one comes to the gate first with their ssd but which one produces the best result because 12 to 1300 megabytes per second uh 12 to 1300 uh, thousand megabytes per second i should say that's still not fully saturating the way that I think a number of people uh, are going to be waiting for. And you might want to hold out for the 14 to 15,000 megabytes per second SSDs because they're sure to come on the horizon. Another thing that was covered at Computex, of course, was Wi-Fi 7. And I would say there was a couple of big standout areas for this one significantly more than the other but uh mediatek you know that big rival to a lot of uh qualcomm and stuff like that uh, they were kind of unveiling their potential controllers for both home and uh business users and again their wi wi-fi 7 controller looks like it's going to be promising somewhere between hitting that sweet spot of 4.5 gigabits per second going all the way up to 35 and again with the maximum performance of Wi-Fi 7 being predicted and kind of outlined at around 46 gigabits per second, that's still pretty darn good for a wireless connection there, potentially. Now, um, again, we've already seen what Qualcomm have kind of put out on the table there and a few different processes from companies like Realtek being danced around. Um, but the next thing that came up was just kind of groundbreaking and a little bit scary with ZTE's new router. This is 
a 50 gigabit router with Wi-Fi 7. That is right. This is a router uh, with a ridiculous number of antennas uh, that has a 50 gigabit port. So again, <coughs> we're talking about 5,000 megabytes per second uh, uh, in network port there to go on the back there. Clearly for the WAN, and again, the number of places in the world are going to be able to support that kind of connection. Pretty slim. They were talking about where they're discussing deployment of this. But the fact this is also going to be rolled out with Wi-Fi 7, meaning it's going to be able to take advantage of not only the uh, en enhanced performance of uh, that's available to Wi-Fi 7 there, but on top of that, it's going to be taking advantage of the 320 megahertz band, as well as well as taking advantage of those different frequencies as well. So the result is that this is going to be a comically high performance router that even if you're not going to have an internet connection running into your home or business in the next five years that could possibly saturate this. It's not going to matter anyway because the network potential of a device like this is pretty groundbreaking indeed. Again, there's a lot more information about this. These two write-ups were by far the best I could find on this, but there is another one that goes into a little bit more um, kind of technical detail about Wi-Fi 7 there over on Mobile World Live, so do check that out. Next up, uh, following up something that feels like it was like a million years ago, but it really wasn't, WD and SMR drives. We've, you know, over I think the last two years, I've produced so many different videos and articles, sort of, you know, going through this and uh, what was going on, what WD did wrong, how they tried to kind of maybe roll things back, rebranding and more. We covered it for ages, bench testing different drives and kind of keeping a watchful eye over this whole thing. And for many, this is finally reaching some kind of conclusion. So if you weren't aware, you could go um, a couple of years ago when WD were kind of found to be misrepresenting some of their WD red drives uh, for NAS, when in fact they were using a technique known as shingled magnetic recording, which is when the platters are slightly overlined, which again, isn't a big problem early doors, but once it comes to things like RAID resyncing, RAID rebuilding and stuff like that, then it can become problematical if you're doing constant writing to drives, SMR drives, particularly in a RAID environment, are by no means suitable. And a lot of people were very, very upset about this to the point where WD opened um, a quarrel where you could go and register um, your kind of legal dispute to this. Again, all of those dates have passed. Uh, the reason I bring it up now, is it now looks like some people have been getting paid. But as dictated by a bunch of websites, but I've got to say, by far the best write-up was Tom's Hardware here, um, talking about how much people are actually getting. And it looks like some people have been getting as little as $4 to $7 per drive. Now, WD had already put aside uh, $2.7 million dollars uh, into a compensation fund for people, which when you're talking about a multi-billion dollar company isn't actually that much. And I think a lot of this compensation goes down to how people were affected. Not, I don't think any of the people that had losses would have been paid this amount. People that had run rather intense network attached storage environments where the drives may have let them down because $4 to $7 is a comical sum for that. Um, but that said... Um, there were, during that process, during this whole, uh, not just the litigation, but this whole process going back and forth, there were users, and we tried to update it as many times as we could on the article, and again, it's linked here, it's also linked, uh, hopefully, in the description, but we talked lots and lots and lots about um, not only the people that were paid out, but also users who managed to get new drives. So these were people that said, look, I've got a 12-bay array, it's filled with your SMR drives, I don't want these SMR drives. I want some CMR, PMR, conventional magnetic, magnetic, uh, conventional magnetic recording and perpendicular magnetic recording. And a lot of them did get drives turned around. And I think that, for me, is worth significantly more than the money being paid out. And again, people that were saying they got paid, as you can see there from a post on Reddit, $18 there. Not a huge sum of money in the grand scheme of things if you could have lost your data. Um, it does go into a lot of details. And in this particular group, you do hear about some more people that did actually get drives turned around. And I will link to this, of course, in the description. But I'm kind of hoping this is the end of this story because we've talked about it on and off for about two years, once every couple of months. So it'll be great that this is the end of that. And WD have hopefully learned some lessons. But Mm, could have thought people could have got maybe a bit more to ching more than that. Next up, QNAP unveiled a new cost-effective NAS 4 bay for their lineup. QNAP have really been rolling out a lot of their solutions in the middle of this year, and they've kind of started replacing 
everything. What's really annoying though is a lot of these devices that are getting replaced, it's the East that's getting the benefits. I know a number of you that have seen my videos on the TS-464 uh, have complained that it's just not possible to get hold of them. Indeed, there's a chap that uh, me and Eddie are speaking to uh, on the inquiry section who had to ship it all the way from the East just to get hold of that 4-bay there. So even though Kinup are now showing off this new affordable uh, four bay based on the same architecture as the TS-233, as you can see on screen. Um, for a lot of users, there's a question about when a system like this will arrive. It's, you know, it's a quad-core ARM processor. It's got the MPU, so it's got that little onboard uh, assistant there, you know, of a same similar architecture as the Google Coral M uh, TPU to assist with AI-powered recognition in surveillance and photo and stuff like that. But ultimately... This system and its architecture is, you know, if they get the price right, it's going to be very intriguing and interesting. But more so than that, when's it going to be available? Is it available now? Let's go to the Buy Pages Live. Let's select you guys in the US. Let's select North America. Let's go straight in. Let's go for one of the big guns. Let's go for B&H. Does B&H have this system? I don't believe they will. But let's have a little look live. And we see still not available on there. And I think QNAP could really stand to, you know, list their products and have a launch period that's a lot more global than they seem to be doing at the moment. But still, I'm kind of hoping I get hold of one of these uh, for a review, simply because the 2 bay as good as it was, it lacked a few features that I think a lot of people would enjoy. RAID 5's got a couple of LAN ports on there. And although the memory's not expandable, this could be a nice little default middle ground option for a lot of users. But for now, let's see what we hear from QNAP on this, and hopefully we do see this in the West. And finally, kind of putting a little topper on a story from last week. We were talking about a Lincoln College that was forced to close after 157-year tenure due to a ransomware attack. Yes, obviously the pandemic and stuff like that had, you know, played its part, but that was kind of the last straw and it forced them to close, just not being able to afford the ransomware demand and ultimately a rock and a hard place situation. Now, the reason I return to this story is because IBM have just committed $5 million to help schools in this position, whether it was to pay off outstanding debts or to reinforce their security. Now, much like I mentioned earlier on with WD, $5 million is a bit of a drop in the ocean. It's not a vast amount, and this is slightly more tokenistic, perhaps, and obviously it's going to go towards IBM products and services, but still it's better than nothing, and it's nice to see stuff like this and it's really it's a rare treat to end a date and news of the week video with something actually quite positive and i'd like to hope we're going to see a lot more of this now that during the pandemic we saw lots of people you know in educational authorities and you know in the education system being forced to move over to digital uh, services a great deal more than they've ever had before therefore opening the doors uh, a great deal more to cyber crime. So again, kudos to IBM for kind of putting their money where their mouth is. A little bit more money wouldn't have hurt, but it's still great that they did the gesture. But this has been Data News of the Week. Stay tuned next week. We've got a bunch of comparisons in the works. A number of you are asking about where are the comparisons. I've not been comparing products. It's the name of the website for quite a while. So I did a huge number of comparisons recently with the new Synology 5 Bay, that new QNAP, the new TerraMaster, and of course, finishing up on the comparisons of the routers which are slightly off shot here but otherwise thank you so much for watching this has been data news of the week subscribe to learn more click like if you've enjoyed it and i'll see you next time